before I actually get into how we prove things um, using these clients, I wanna show you one more thing that's, that's very client heavy and that's um, the ability to submit misbehavior. And so, right. So these clients have a, IBC is, is kind of assuming something about these clients, if you notice, is that there's only one valid consensus state per height. Um, because we take in a header and we create a single consensus state for that height and we store it, right? And uh, that's the same assumption that we make, you know, in blockchains. You know, if a blockchain is working correctly, that means that there's only one valid block per height. The validator set has only signed, you know, with a two thirds majority on a single block per height. If that ever is broken and the validator set, you know, a malicious validator set signs two valid blocks at the same height, you know, the blockchain is broken, right? And so there isn't a way for IBC to recover from that case, really. Um, the best we can do is detect it and prevent further damage from happening. Um, so that's kind of what submit misbehavior is doing. IBC has the assumption that the validator set on the other end is, you know, has is is honest and it's not going to fork. Um, but if it ever detects it, a relay, it, it, but if it ever happens, a relayer can detect it and submit that misbehavior, and will freeze the client and prevent any further interactions. Um, so how does that work? Uh, we can look at just the tenement case. Um, and I will show you again, I think, probably from the proto file. Right. So the misbehavior, it's fairly simple. Um, and it, it has the client ID that we're submitting the misbehavior for. And it has two headers, header one and header two. And for this to be valid misbehavior, these headers have to be at the same height. They have to be different and they have to be signed by a two thirds majority of the validators set at that height. If that is the case, the, the blockchain on the other end is broken and we just have to freeze the client and stop interacting with it at all, right? And so that's kind of exactly what we do on, on the misbehavior handler. Um, you know, so it routes, all this routes through the O2 client to the tenement implementation all of the actual light client logic is housed within specific client implementations. The, the O2 client kind of just does the basic storing of consensus states and, and kind of routing of messages to routing of calls to the individual client types. Um, so we look at this misbehavior, um, we verify that it's valid. Um, we get the consensus states for this misbehavior. And then we check that that they're actually, um, first of all, that they're valid. These have to be valid headers, meaning they have to be have, have been signed by two thirds of the valid validator set, and we ensure that um, that the that the block hashes are different, meaning that there were indeed two hashes. Um, there is one other type of misbehavior for um, for tenement clients, and that's breaking time monotonicity. Um, so this is the second type of misbehavior um, here. So the first type of misbehavior is two headers at the same height um, are different and signed by the validator set. Um, the second type of misbehavior is um, header 49 has a time of, you know, 2 p.m. and header 50 has a time of 1 p.m., right? Meaning that the height after the, the later height has a previous time, right? Um, part of the tenement protocol is that we enforce that time, you know, monotonically increases with the block height. And if the validator set has signed a later height with a lower time than a previous header, we can submit that as proof as well, with you know header one being the lower time and header or header one being the greater height and header two being the lower height, and you know, freeze the client for that reason as well. Um, so in the tenement client, these are the two misbehaviors, 
potentially different types of clients will have different types of misbehavior, right? So the solo machine will have its own type of misbehavior. Maybe Solana will have different types. Um, so this is up to client implementation to determine what constitutes misbehavior by the entire validator set and freezes it. Um, it's very important to note, this is different from evidence in the slashing module of a particular blockchain. If you're familiar with the Cosmos SDK and how it works, you'll know that um, if a validator double signs on a block, their stake gets slashed. And this is evidence that can be submitted to Tenement and then Tenement will include it in a block. This is different from that because what we're talking about in the slashing module is an individual validator doing something wrong and punishing them. IBC doesn't care about that. IBC doesn't care that one validator has gone rogue. IBC only cares if the entire chain has gone rogue, right? Because if one validator has gone rogue on the counterparty chain, that's fine. That's, that's the whole point of a Byzantine fault tolerance system, right? It's, the blockchain will continue running with, with a certain amount of faults. It's only if that BFT assumption of at least two thirds are honest is broken that we have a problem with IBC. And that's where we freeze the client.